Good afternoon. Um, jumping right into this one. This is episode 724, by the way. And this is because of a post I did today that's <laughs> stirred up a lot of conversation. So, to put it simply, you call yourself aware and conscious, and you still get angry, upset, and defensive? Is that what I said? I think it was something like that. That was the title, anyway. Um, before I jump into the topic and really dive in, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and a relationship attraction expert. I'm also becoming a self love mastery expert as well. Um, and I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And also, why I have it because I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Started around December 2016, still going strong, up to episode 724. So, the topic today is about, um, well, <laughs> Let me unpack this a little bit. I posted something this morning because it was on my mind because of some things that are happening in the media, especially in the conscious aware um, expertise arena. Um, simply put, there is some upset right now. Well, I say another way. <laughs> it's gonna be this is gonna be interesting. So again, the topic today is basically you call yourself conscious and aware, yet you still get angry, upset, and defensive. I think it's a defensive. And the reality is that there's this, first of all, there's a rule, unspoken, but there's a rule in the conscious movement. You know, when you're really aware and you're awake and conscious, there's only positive emotions. You can't get upset, you can't get uh, frustrated, you, you've got to be positive all the time. Yeah, right. The reality is that if you are on the planet, human, you're going to get positive and negative emotions. Being conscious and aware and doing work in the conscious movement, I've been on this journey since 1984, so I've had some experience and exposure in this movement. It ain't all pretty. It ain't all perfect either. And this, this thing about, like, you know, you're conscious and aware, so it should be, everything should be perfect, is really a joke. Because we, as human beings, have stuff happen to us. Now, there's this thing about being upset, being put out, being defensive, being angry, as something is being wrong with that because you're supposed to be positive all the time. So first of all, that's not true. So let me just erase that one from the beginning. The thing is, <coughs> excuse me, the thing is that when we do, because we do, get upset, anxious, upset, um, uh, angry, defensive, etc. First of all, is this first of all, second of all? <laughs> I'm watching my order here. First of all, how long do you stay there? That's probably the best question. That's the, probably the biggest thing right here is how long do you stay there? Because being conscious and aware is not about never being upset and angry. Being conscious and aware means when you get, con when you get upset and angry, what do you do with it? And how long do you stay there? Now, for some people, they think being conscious and aware and being, and I'm using that as a generic term, meaning awakened, awoke, conscious, etc. That when you are when you get angry and upset, the first thing you're going to do is like put it away and get happy again. Again, bullshit. It's not possible. Well, excuse me. It's possible but not effective because what happens is people are just putting, it's like um, painting over rust. It doesn't work. When you really are conscious and aware, you're, doing the you're in the journey, you're doing the work, you're becoming more of a, of a caring, compassionate, wise human being, ideally. When stuff happens, when shit happens, when you feel upset, when you get upset, when you get triggered, when you get angry, all these different things, first of all, recognize it's all right to be that way. That's kind of the biggest thing. It's like, oh, I can be upset even though I'm supposed to be conscious? Yes, you can be. It's part of the joy of having a spectrum of feelings of being a human being. Now, the second step, well, not these are not steps, these are just things to be aware of. So first of all, being aware of the fact that you can be aware of the fact you're upset. That's an awareness right there. Second piece, though, is to recognize that you don't have to live there. Because a lot of people in the population tend to reside or have a default nature which puts them into upset and, and, and anger versus anything else. That they get caught up in this paradigm where um, they're looking for... Basically, it's like they're looking for triggers. Looking for someone to upset them so they can be in their natural state, which is upset and angry. That's not healthy either. So... To flip it the other way is that we as human beings 
have the exposure and the experience of being upset and angry as I mentioned and defensive and everything else when we stay defensive angry upset we are being um, I want to say out of alignment it's not the way I would say it but when we stay when we're in that place we're actually holding back from being possibly no hang on back up a second I'm, I'm going on the wrong path when we are caught up in and stay defensive about something it, let me say this way I'm trying to say something else it's not coming out let me do this way if somebody insults you calls your names calls you out says bad things about you and you get defensive if you spend your whole time being defensive defending your position arguing for what you think is right you're actually going to be weakened and defeated that way I'm just checking if that's true or not inside of me so I'm saying stuff and I've got to double check what I'm saying is accurate that's the way it works so trust me or to bear with me you should say here's, here's, let me say another way because I'm trying, I'm trying to um, massage this into a way that makes sense I'm aware of right now I'm not going to say names there are some individuals in, in the personal growth industry who are being called to the carpet called to account for things they did a long time ago and I'm speaking of two I mentioned being two different individuals just to keep your mind thinking about this because it's not, one, not just one I'm aware that in this fact with these two individuals I'm aware of they've been accused of things that tarnish their image and they've been become defensive Watching one of them hasn't one. One of them become more arrogant, like, no, it's not me, I'm better than that. Which is also kind of another one of these traps that people fall into. The piece I keep recommending, the piece I come back to more and more, is if you are, if someone does that to you, and I've had someone note to me, the ideal first response, which wasn't my first response, but it became clear after that, my first response was, like, how is that true for you? Like, how do you see that about me being that way? Because I really was, at first, like going, how on earth did she think of that? Think that about me it wasn't true. I know it wasn't. But I also got clear because of the situation I was in, I couldn't defend myself, which actually was a blessing in disguise. But I could get to the place inside of going, so what was it I could have done that may have triggered that? And I realized it wasn't even mine. It was not even mine to worry about. So I let it go. That was a blessing and also... I don't say I don't want to right, blow, toot my own, my own horn and say that was a blessing for me because I could then be more aware. But I realized in that moment, because I didn't defend myself, I asked the question, I checked in and saw there was nothing there. It's like, oh, okay, they're throwing, they're throwing words, you know, names at me. They're not going to stick. So in the place where you if you, not saying you particularly, but you generally, so it's not aimed at you watching this, but as a general you, the global you, kind of disorder, when, let me do it another way, when someone, <laughs> let's make it more anonymous, when someone gets upset, angry, defensive especially, and otherwise perturbed by what happened, and doesn't do something to shift from it to get to the bottom of it. So it's not about panacea being nice and like everything's okay. I mean, I'm suppressing the anger because that just becomes the beach ball is going to keep coming up. It's gonna, that beach ball is going to keep pushing up and making your life harder and harder if you don't do something about it. So doing the self-investigation, the self-reflection, the self-awareness to go, hang on a second. Is there any truth in this, first of all? Because there might be. If there is none, then reality is there's nothing to get upset about. Yes, you may have to take some legal action if it's something about your business. But if someone's going to keep calling you names, they're looking to get a rise out of you. Do you really want to become a puppet on a string? Because when they're trying to, when they're throwing like, hooks at you to pull you and to get you to, to get a rise out of you, they're trying to get you to be a puppet to their puppet mastery. Don't fall through the trap. When you're clear that it isn't about your stuff, that's one thing. If you are becoming defensive and angry, <laughs> Your recommend, my recommendation, my, my uh, prescription, so to speak, is to take time out when you can, because you may not be doing it in the moment, may not be able to do it, may not be able to do it in the moment, let's try that in English. Let's take time out of that to simply reflect and see, okay, so what was triggering me? Maybe you were worried that people would see that you weren't perfect. That's a lesson I've learned many times. It's not, being perfect is, is a whole other conversation. 
Secondly, perhaps more importantly, the realization that what happened isn't about you in the first place means there's no need to become defensive. Now, I said it earlier about being able to ask and inquire. That's a step in mastery. That's a step in awareness. That's a step in consciousness because when you do ask, one, you can learn if you were off track, and two, you can learn where the other person's coming from. Both of those can lead to a solution. But when you do defend and you fight back and you argue and say, no, it's not true, but blah, 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 and all these different banging against, it's just banging against a wall. It doesn't work effectively. And if you're somebody who's, who calls yourself conscious and aware, you may have experienced that in the past, and maybe you found a way through it. And that's what I'm recommending, is that you do work your way through it, because this, this shift, and it's not Pollyanna, this is the whole point, it's not about pretending it's all okay, but this shift into becoming more compassionate with yourself, understanding what's happening, and inquiring into what is going on. Like, what is the other person's perception? Is this true or not? And then if it is true that you did something you shouldn't have done, which in, I say in my case, that wasn't the case, thankfully. The blessing, I guess. But to know that it was that there's something off is to do something of some sort to make amends. If people have been affronted by something you did or didn't do, and you feel like somehow that you've been prejudiced against, if what is true for them is true, or what they believe is true, then to keep arguing and denying their truth is a no-win situation. A large part of this process is to be willing to be humble and to be authentic and to walk away clean. To walk away with a victory, as in to punish the other person, to be better than to beat them up and to make yourself right, isn't a win. I don't know what to call it, but it's not a win. I've got another name for it. But the truth in this journey of in consciousness and awareness and growth is how can we be, including myself, more willing to learn, to grow, and to become better at being human? An awakened, aware, conscious, loving human, for that matter. I'm seeing something else. This, the, by the way, this is, again, this is a, hang on, a sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> okay, I didn't blow the microphone out with that one. Um, so, this Facebook Live, by the way, and this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube, was inspired because this is actually a talk based upon the post I did earlier today that I didn't realize was going to create so much response, but I posted a question earlier today asking for feedback and input about if you're conscious and aware, can you still be upset, angry, and everything else? It generated quite a bit of response. Last time I looked, it was over 60 comments, or 60 likes comments. It was a bunch, and some shares too. So it apparently touched a nerve. So I want to speak a little bit to that. And this is only a pl this is only one piece of the puzzle. There's a lot more to it, apparently. But the thing that I'm going to get to bottom line again is, well, here's two pieces <laughs> showing up. One of them is, when we get upset, when we get angry, we can only, and I've heard this and I've, and I've come to believe it, we can only get angry at things we care about. If somebody says something about you, you don't care about it, you won't get angry, you'll be like, yeah, whatever. You move on. If you try to get to the place of whatever when you're still getting angry, that's not going to work again. But if you're getting angry, then find out what it is you care about. You care about your self-image. You care about how people look at you. You care about, pe you care about people trusting you. If you do, you can do something about it. But if you are finding that somebody says something and you get immediately reactive, upset, dis disturbed, your peace disturbed, that is, then maybe there's something to look at. And if you are conscious and aware, you will hopefully be conscious and aware enough to look at what is going on. So this is this thing, it's a conundrum in a way. Because when something like this happens, if you're somebody's on the path of growth and whatever that evolution that is, and I say I've been doing this since 84, so that's 35 years. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's longer than I've been alive. I mean, long, yeah, for more of my life than, a, yeah, I think you got that point. <laughs> so anybody who is in a position of power, authority, leadership, who runs an organization or a company or a teaching or a, a um, following, who is not willing to grow and learn in that role, like when they have reached the top and they're done and they're always the expert and they're always telling everybody what to do and they don't listen to other people, 
I would walk away. I simply wouldn't follow him anymore because somebody who's not learning isn't a good teacher. That you can write down. The best teachers are ones who are always learning. And so in this context, what I've been talking about really is about remembering to be a student at all times, to be a, less, a listening, learning, wise stu student to become a better teacher. There are people who teach stuff that are very good experts, but even if they're teaching something that's contained and that's, that's, that's fixed, they should still be growing. Should. Yeah. I recommend they would be growing and learning continually. And if you're someone like that, I hope you're doing the same thing. Those people who lead organizations and lead teachings who aren't evolving themselves are people I won't want to follow. That simple. And there are people out there who've done this for many, many, many years who are still teaching the same thing and haven't moved. And when stuff comes up to um, challenge them, they don't, know, they don't deal with it. They just push it away. And that is a problem. So in summary, because I want to break this down into simple terms, this is a... Um, Well, I'll say this way. This is an opportunity to change, an opportunity to grow, and to find people you can trust who are growing as well. The best coaches, the best teachers, the best leaders are people who keep a few steps ahead of you all the time. If you outpace them, that's not a good recommendation. So I know I've moved away from the topic I started with, but it's kind of the same thing, because this is about people in the conscious awareness movement. They're not living their truth um, as a student of growth. So I think I'm gonna leave it there because it seems to be the best way of putting it. Yeah, I think that's about it. I, I thought there were more in it, but that's kind of what I want to talk about. So um, I, do invite your, I do invite your dialogue about this, by the way. Again, the post is early today. You can respond to that one because it's got lots of questions and answers and sharing on it. This is part of the same conversation, so you can post responses here. This is my daily Facebook Live. It wasn't my usual topic, but it was coming up, so I had to talk about it. I did talk about this a couple of times in other ways earlier in the week, by the way, so this is more of a blunt, direct response to that topic. Um, I thank you for watching, as always. This is my daily Facebook Live. If you haven't seen me before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. So 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day you can find me here, um, usually. Once in a while, I move it because I have a social engagement or something else going on an event. But I do announce that. Secondly, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every day, as I mentioned. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook and onto my YouTube channel, so I'll give you the links for those. So um, Facebook is barryselby.author, and on YouTube I have a channel which is my name, Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. Um, yeah, I think that's really it. I, I, there's, there's no more juice in this one for me at the moment. It'll come back, I'm sure, it'll be more later. But again, if you have thoughts, ideas, please put in the comments below. Um, there was the question I asked this morning on Facebook has got a lot of responses already. A lot of responses and interaction. It's been interesting what stirred things up. So, well, thank you, Mary. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're going to re-listen. And uh, this one's been an interesting topic. But again, the post is what stirred up everything. So I want to do a little bit of discourse and share my own feelings about it. I'll put the link to this in the... Um, in the comments as well for the other broker, the other post. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate being with me and for staying, staying as long as you did. If there's been a benefit to you, let me know that as well. Um, yeah, nothing else to say about it. If you want help, reach out to me over social media. Put it that simply. I thank you for watching. As always, uh, back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, that's about it. Take care of yourselves. Bye.